John, welcome back to yet again another episode of J.I. Productions. It's your boy J.I. and I'm back at it again with another video for you guys. Now, as you guys can see, we are currently in this thing. Um, and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to edit this video yet. But if I edit it the way that I think I'm editing it, um, and I put the clip of the noise the car was making last night first, then you guys already hear the noise that I was talking about in the title um, and in the thumbnail. I don't know what the hell's going on. Something was not right, for sure. So basically, let me go ahead and give you guys a backstory. Um, so in the morning, I pulled up to work um, and you know pulled over my boy back to the money. And he told me, he said, hey man, why your car making that weird noise? And I was like, noise, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I'm like, what, what do you mean with noise? But I didn't think nothing of it because as you guys know, we have the stage four twin disc Nick Gretty clutch in here um, compare, uh, paired with the Nick Gretty upgraded throw out bearing slash slave cylinder. Um, just put them in the car. Uh, we're still on the brake in miles. We're currently at 954 brake in miles. However, you know what I'm saying? We're still breaking the car in. Now, with that being said, um, it literally says in the comments um, and on the instructions that, you know, the clutch is going to be a little chattery during break-in. So I'm thinking he was talking about, oh, the clutch chatter. So I'm like, oh, no, nah, man, that's nothing to worry about. That's normal. We good. But then a couple hours go by. I go to school. I get out of class. Me and my girl pull up to Costco. Uh, so I can get some gas because, you know, the Mustangs gas tank is significantly smaller than the Camaros um, as far as, you know, driving wise goes and stuff like that. And then just how much it can hold. Uh, the capacity is actually smaller. I think the capacity on the Stang is like 14 or 15 gallons. And on the Camaro, it's about 18 or 19, something like that. But anyway, yeah, so we pulled up to the gas station, Costco, of course. Only place I go for my gas, bro. I'm sorry. I'm not even sponsored by them. But, like, dude, you can't beat 260 a gallon for premium. Especially nowadays. You just can't. So, with that being said, man, we pulled up to the, guy, the, the Costco. And there's a guy on the opposite side of a pump. Um, and he has, like, a Lexus RX 350. You know, like, the little... Uh, not the sedan, but the like SUV, the crossover joint or whatever. Um, and he's like, hey man, I love the sound of your car. I love the sound of your car. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, bro, this whole stock is hell. Like the flow masters got this joint quiet as hell. If you guys haven't seen the video um, where I did a review of the exhaust that's currently on the car, it's, it's not loud at all. It's not, you know what I'm saying? But I was just in my head, I'm like, maybe he's, you know, mentioning it because it's a manual you know what i'm saying so i have to rev it up a little bit to get it to go and whatnot um so i was like you know nevertheless i was like thank you i appreciate it and then he proceeded to talk and he was like yeah man it sounds like a like a turbocharger or like a, a supercharger or something and i was like huh when he said that i instantly knew that i had an issue and he just didn't know what he was talking about so basically that noise that you guys heard um, in the beginning of the video, and I'll go ahead and play it right now. The noise that you guys heard is, if I'm not mistaken, throw out bearing. It's upsetting. I cannot sit here and cap with you guys, but it's it's definitely a throw out bearing noise. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what they do when they're about to go out. They start whining as if it was a power steering pump. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I pull up. We go to the HEB because we're gonna grab some groceries. So we go to HEB. Pull up to the HEB. How about the car? Um, and that's when I hear the noise. So I started recording or whatever. Now I rev the car up and the noise increases as the RPMs increase. So I'm like, bro, what the hell? This is literally what it was doing when the car was down um, in the first place. So I went ahead and recorded the clips that you guys saw and then I turned the car off. I noticed that, you know what I'm saying, the car was a little too close to the other car that was parked next to me. Um, so I decided I was gonna move the car. So I went ahead, turned the car back on and went to go move it. 
Now, I'll go ahead and play the clip of me moving the car. Shout out to my lovely fiance, Joy, for getting the footage. Um, I'll go ahead and run that now. can hear there's literally no noise at all no clutch chatter no excruciating whistling sound nothing like there's no noise at all the car is quiet so i don't know and that's how it is uh now it's been like that all all night drove the car home perfectly fine mind you it was making that noise but i still have a hundred percent of my clutch pedal feel like it has not dropped yet like and I hope it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Knock on knock on shifter or whatnot. But yeah, like the clutch pedal did not drop down to the ground like it did the initial time when I went to, you know, had to change it in the first place, like with the stock one. So I don't know what's going on. Um throughout the day, like when I went on lunch, I shot that video um that I was telling you guys about the smell, the burning smell I was getting. I shot the video, I didn't hear the noise, nothing, and like the noise is loud, bro, like it's noticeable. So you're gonna hear it. Like I wasn't hearing the noise or nothing. So it's really throwing me off. I really have no idea what the heck is causing that noise. I think it's the throw out bearing. I'm a little worried, man. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get the car up in the air and see, uh, you know, with the car idling, see if we can pinpoint the noise. It sounded to me like it was coming from the bell housing, um, which is not good because that's where the throw out bearing, uh, you know, resides. So it sits on the input uh, slash output shaft. And yeah, it's just not, that's not good. So that's where we're at right now, guys. I, I really am at a loss for words. I have no idea. I've even thought about calling American Muscle to see what's going on. Um, and I'm still gonna do that. I'm actually gonna go ahead and give them a call uh, and try to see if I can send the person who answers the phone or whoever I get in contact with has like a company email that I can send the video of the noise to. Uh, just so one, I can get some answers from them. And two, I can also set up a paper trail because as you guys may or may not know, uh, if you watch the unboxing of the Nick's Grady Stage 4 Clutch, um, the clutch has a one year or 20,000 mile, um, whichever comes first, warranty on it. So that was another like um, big, you know, reason for me buying the clutch in the first place is that it has a warranty. So with that being said, I definitely wanna make a paper trail for the future moving forward to make sure that, you know, they know, hey, he was having some issues off of the initial install. Oh man, I ain't even gonna lie, this truck right here is sitting nasty, champ. That hose, I like those wheels right there. Anyway, like I was saying, um, yeah, let's get a, let's get a little roll by for y'all. Sheesh, that hole is sitting pretty chunky, champ. I can't cap. But anyway, yeah, man, I want to go ahead and set up a a paper trail. That way, if something happens, God forbid, I at least have something like you know, in the from you know the past that says like, hey, I've been dealing with this issue once before. I called you guys. Y'all said it was fine. Blah blah blah. Like. I, I've had issues where, you know, people try to avoid your warranty because they don't want to cover the expenses. And I'm not trying to have that fall back on me. Um, another thing, I've been posting on my social media pictures of my car during the rain uh, because I think the previous owner might have had my car ceramic coated. Now, this is why I say this. Check out that hood, man. As you guys can see, all of the little water droplets, this all it does. They literally beat up. Even on the windshield, they beat up and then literally form a big old puddle and they fall right off. I, I I don't know, bro. That's very, like, it's a big deal to me, okay? A lot of people, like, were clowning me. Like, my boy Les, he was clowning me for, like, you know, losing my stuff about it. Because it's like, bro, what the hell? Like, I've never had a car like that that does that. Like, Mamba never did that. And I waxed him a lot. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, bro, that's, that's where I'm at right now, man. And... It's kind of it's kind of frustrating 
honestly because you know you pay all this money you just get the car you think you just got it running right and then you know what i'm saying boom here this is and we're 958 miles into the break-in period so like i don't know y'all i don't know i'm gonna go ahead and get the car up in the air you guys stay tuned for that video but without further ado that's gonna wrap it up for this one i'll see you guys in the next one peace